I think Everett Roos probably had a solid skill set, or he wouldn't he wouldn't have a, you know lived in this area for as long as he did. If he were ill-equipped, he would have he we wouldn't see all of the, you know these journal entries and letters. He did have a skill set, but no doubt, it doesn't matter how great your skill set is, you're always going to run into, you know, things that could kill you. I absolutely know that he had nights that were treacherous, where he wondered if he would live or die. And even in some of his, you know, accounts and some of his letters, he talked about how difficult things were or how harsh the environment was, that he couldn't find water at certain times. And that's just the reality. And it's really beautiful too to see how inspired he was by the land and that it totally captivated every part of his being, but he was also willing to endure the harshness of it. I can enter, you know, one area that I've been hundreds of times and still see it with new eyes. And that's something that I know that Everett Roos had and why he fell in love with the land because, because of its beauty, maybe because of its danger too, and because it's one place where you truly can feel the scope of the planet, the scope of who you are and, uh, and your smallness, but also part in, in all of it, part in the system. And no doubt that was one thing that drove him, drove him to discover more, drove him to endure, you know, hardships, lack of food, lack of sleep, monsoons, cold nights, and loneliness. I bet the hardest challenge for him was his isolation, really. But still, there was something that kept calling him. The siren of the desert captivated him. And I know exactly what, what, what called him in.